A while back, I made a video on the worst ways NBA careers have ended. In that video, I talked about numerous players from Yao Ming and Brandon Roy's injuries to Mahmoud Abdul Raouf getting blackballed, Rudy Tomjanovic getting hit by a life-threatening punch. In this video, I want to expand and talk about something else. NBA players who desperately tried to save their careers, players who kept trying and trying to make a comeback, but nobody wanted them. It got to the point where they were seriously not doing well mentally and fell into a dark place. It started to make them question their own self-worth if they could not play the sport they love. What's even worse is when you realize all of these guys were former stars. Some were at the top of the world before it all came crashing down. Anyway, how's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today let's take a look at four of the most depressing ends to an NBA career. Stefan Marbury In 2009, a video of Stefan Marbury surfaced. In this video, he was eating… Vaseline? What in the world is going on? The man we once knew as Starberry regressed into a downward spiral. Not only did his NBA career fall apart, but with his father's death in 2007, his entire life was falling apart. In a rather daunting interview, he tried to reflect back at this period of his life, and this is what he said. I wanted to die because I was that depressed and I was that sick. I was trapped in how I felt about how I was treated. I was trapped with decisions that I made. While Marbury went on to have a very successful basketball career in China, the best career out of any former NBA player, towards the end of his time in the NBA, he had a hard time dealing with it. In particular, his five years on the Knicks, which coincided with Isaiah Thomas's tenure as the president and coach. If you're a Knicks fan, we can all agree that this was the worst period in the history of the franchise. Marbury was an incredibly popular athlete, but when he arrived in New York with expectations to lead this team back to the playoffs, he wasn't the guy we thought he was. In fact, shortly after his arrival, he started a public feud with his coach Larry Brown. As the Knicks continued to regress and fall to the bottom, so did Marbury's popularity. New York Daily News even had an article saying Marbury was, quote, the most reviled athlete in New York. <laughs> I mean, I get why everyone was frustrated. This season, the Knicks had by far the highest payroll in the entire NBA, and <laughs> it wasn't even close. Yet, they also had the second worst record in the entire league, the worst record in the Eastern Conference. To say he was the most reviled athlete, it seems harsh, but a lot of folks truly thought that way. Eventually, Larry Brown got fired, replaced by Isaiah Thomas. Oh, and remember that whole sexual harassment case he got involved in? To add on to this, even after Thomas took over as head coach, Marbury got into another feud. When he heard that he was gonna get removed from the starting lineup, Marbury threatened him and refused to play unless his demands were met. Madison Square Garden erupted, but not in a good way. In several home games, they booed the entire team, as the chance to fire Isaiah became louder and louder. While this collapse was mostly due to Marbury's own undoing, his father also passed away around this time, which really hurt him. He even admitted he could not think properly for the rest of his time in New York. Eventually, Marbury would be gone. As he finished out his career in Boston, no other team gave him a chance after that. He was deemed as too much of a head case, a coach killer, drama followed him everywhere he went, so no other team wanted to take a gamble on him. That's why Marbury went to China to begin with, to find himself. He still wanted to be treated like a star and be in the spotlight. It just wasn't gonna happen in the NBA anymore. So while his career came to a depressing end, at least he got closure. Greg Oden Hey, do you play basketball? I used to. Oh, you used to? Yeah. I can beat you! <laughs> Greg Oden, while he may not have been a star in the NBA, he was certainly a star for his entire high school and college career. One of the greatest prospects of all time, a generational talent who was supposed to usher in a new era of big men. A guy who many compared to the likes of David Robinson, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Shaq. 
We had so, so much faith in him to succeed and revive the center position, especially during a time when big men were fading away. With the number one overall pick of the 2007 draft, the Portland Trail Blazers drafted him as the final piece of the puzzle. By drafting Brandon Roy and LaMarcus Aldridge in the previous year, and now drafting Odin, this trio was supposed to take over the league. Unfortunately, Odin only appeared in two of the six seasons in Portland, as he had multiple knee surgeries and spent years upon years in rehab. This trio managed to play only 62 games together, but they had a ridiculous record of 50 and 12, and that's with Odin not even at his full potential. Prior to the NBA, Odin never had a knee injury before, but before his rookie season even started, he had a season-ending microfracture surgery. Shortly after that, he got the same surgery on his other knee. In four years from 2007 to 2010, he had two microfracture surgeries, a major foot injury, and his kneecap got chipped. Maybe his joints were simply too big to handle his massive body. Maybe the setbacks were too much to overcome. Maybe the fact that one of his legs was longer than the other played a role in his injuries. It's really upsetting because Odin wanted so badly to play. He never wanted to accept his basketball career might be over. And after his retirement, he descended into alcoholism to cope with it. Nothing is more dejecting than reading this article from the Indie Star. Odin would stare at the television screen, watching clips of the player drafted number two behind him, Kevin Durant, now a league superstar. The tears would flow. He would watch the old NBA YouTube clips of himself, knowing he shouldn't. He would sob. However, despite the premature end to his career, Odin found purpose in a different part of his life. He went back to Ohio State and graduated in 2019, and found a new passion for player development. He finds joy in working with young athletes to reach their dreams, and supported them when they're going through adversity. John Wall It seems like it was just yesterday when John Wall and the Washington Wizards were tearing it up, and he was recognized as one of the NBA's brightest young point guards. Five straight All-Star appearances, and despite staying relatively healthy for most of his years, by 2018, the injuries hit him like a brick wall. It all started with a freak accident. Wall slipped in his own house and suffered a full rupture of his Achilles, an injury that few players have ever recovered from. Wall sat out two entire seasons. One of them was to recover from the injury. The other was kinda shrouded in mystery. He was healthy and he could've played, but the Houston Rockets did not want him to play, preferring to give minutes to their younger guards instead. It was around this time Wall lost faith in himself, and wondered can he ever return back to the all-star he once was. In a span of a few short years, he went from forcing Game 7 against Boston, to tearing his Achilles a year later, then losing his best friend, his mother, to breast cancer. It was a terrible series of events, to which Wall described, that was when I started going to a really dark place. The thoughts would be playing in my head, like, my best friend is gone, and I lost the only sanctuary I've ever known, the game of basketball. Not to mention, during all these years, Wall was making over $40 million a year. It was seen as the worst contract in the entire NBA, not because of his lack of talent, but his lack of availability. He barely played over the course of this massive contract. And oh, he got criticized so much, but it wasn't his fault. Fortunately, not all hope is lost for John Wall. As of this video, he last played in the NBA in 2023 with the LA Clippers. He's still trying to make a comeback and even had workouts with various teams. Even if he won't ever be the same player he used to be, there's still a small chance a team could sign him. He was always a great teammate, he never burned any bridges, and he's still a well-respected player in NBA circles. And at number one, Magic Johnson. Most folks are already aware of his HIV diagnosis that forced him to retire, but how many people know he tried numerous times to make a comeback well into the late 1990s? I'm sure you know about his first comeback in 1996 at the age of 36, he didn't play at the same superstar level he's used to, but still contributed enough to get another contract. At least that's what he thought. He averaged about 14 and 7, and the Lakers won 53 games. 
In the summer of 1996, when it was time for him to get a new deal, things started to fall apart. Magic attempted to negotiate with the Lakers for a long-term contract, hoping to play more minutes at point guard. Keep in mind, when he came back, the team slotted him at power forward, because he was too slow to guard any point guards anymore. Unfortunately, the negotiations led nowhere. Even with Magic's connection to the organization, and, you know, being the greatest player in the franchise's history, the front office did not want to commit to a long-term contract. At this point, the Lakers acquired 24-year-old Shaquille O'Neal in free agency. They were one of the youngest teams in the league, equipped with fast, athletic, energetic young players, who they wanted to build their offense around. If Magic was younger, oh, he could run with the best of them. At his older age, he slowed down the offense tremendously. The Lakers simply did not want to go in that direction, and Magic did not want to play for any other team. So that basically ended his hopes for a comeback. But it doesn't stop there. After he officially retired from the NBA, he still had that itch to continue playing professionally. Magic briefly played in Sweden, and even tried to create his own basketball league. For him, his comeback meant more than you think. When he was forced to retire with HIV the first time, it created shockwaves across the country. People legitimately thought he was going to die. Most folks back then didn't know much about HIV. Only that it could turn into AIDS and that was basically a death sentence. Heck, even other NBA players became uncomfortable with the idea of Magic coming back. Either way, he proved he could still play, even with HIV. Anyway, that's all folks. Those were 5 of the most depressing ends to an NBA career. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you see guys like John Wall or Isaiah Thomas returning back to the NBA at some point? It hasn't been that long since they last played, so I certainly can see it happening. What do you think? Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.